Jeannie is standing by with Dr. Kafui Jaraza. He is an associate professor at Duke University specializing in psychology and neurobiology and the first African American to complete a PhD in neurobiology at Duke University. He's standing by with Jeannie. Dr. Kaff, I am so excited to talk to you. Make some sense in my mind. First hey. off, I see you in your lab. You are at, you're essentially working for us, so thank you for what you do. Figuring out ways for us to think in more healthy ways and have access to mental health. So I wanna ask you first off, when it comes to anxiety and depression, what is going on in our mind? What's actually happening? As a neurobiologist, please explain. Yeah, you know, before we even get started, I just want to say I was watching Lori's interview um, with Lily several days ago, and I was just sitting there and thinking that while we're, you know, here talking to people who are celebrated about, you know, their experiences at home and how they're coping with COVID, there's so many young people and teenagers there who are trapped at home with those who are the source of their trauma. And so I wanted to, for those young people who are out there, who COVID doesn't mean being away from your friends, it means being at home with those who are supposed to take care of you, but might be the source of your trauma, that we hear you and we see you and our hearts go out to you. And if you need help, you can reach out at 1-800-273-TALK. And so in my research lab, we work on coming up with new ways of understanding mental illness um, and coming up with new treatments. People have always thought of mental illness as these chemical imbalances. If you turn on your TV, you hear chemical imbalances. But it turns out the brain is made up a lot of cells. About half of those cells don't just process chemistry. They actually also process electricity. And so we think about the brain and feelings as electrical processes in the same way that your heart beats because of electricity. And so we're trying to understand mental illness and anxiety from how the electrical rhythms in your brain change so that we can come up with treatments that reset those rhythms so people can have usual function. Ah, okay. So do you think that understanding what's happening in our brain can help us cope with our feelings and the disconnection sometimes with them? Yeah, you know, coping is a is a huge understanding is a huge part of coping, right? M much of what we deal with, you know, we like uh, biological organisms, we sit in what we call the animal kingdom. And as, as a scientist, just giving my, my tutorial for all you high school students out there out of school. And, and much of what animals do is they adapt to the environment. And so when there's a mismatch between how we live our lives and the environment, we get what we will call change energy. So the brain senses change, right? Whatever your normal is, if something changes, it, we sense change. And that change energy can get really, really haywire, like it does in the case of anxiety. You're constantly sensing this uncertainty in this world, and this, this change energy gets really, really high. And so one of the things that's important is understanding where that change energy is coming from and what it's saying, and then figure out how to navigate that change energy. Mm. Now, some people might navigate that change energy by focusing on themselves and focusing internally. You know, folks have talked about things like exercise or improving yourselves. Some, some might focus on those change energy by focusing on other people, you know, as Absolutely. I was watching Ke yeah. as I was watching Kelly's interview, she said, there are two types of people in the world. And I, and I laughed when I saw it, she said, there are those that are hoarders. <laughs> and then there are those that spread the, you know, the, the food everywhere. Yeah. And, 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 and I think both of those types can be really useful in understanding who you are, right? If you're one who looks internally when the change energy is high, that's where you want to focus. If you're one that looks externally, you might think about figuring out how to help the world and improve it and make it a better place. Mm. And that's how you lower the amount of change energy that you have. Ah, I see. You know, I, so you're touching on understanding where your feel, how, why your brain works the way it does, owning your feelings, and obviously being able to reach out and have help. I also want to talk about the stigma around communities of color when it comes to mental health, right? There's a judgment out there that you're not well or you're crazy um, or you're weak if you need help. So what, what is the message to kids of color when it comes to getting mental health? Yeah, it's, it's such a complicated question that I think um, ties into so much of what we're experiencing right now. I'm, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm a, a neuroscientist, but I'm also an engineer by background. And mm. one of the things that we learn as engineers is that systems do what they're built to do. And so I think in a lot of ways, there's a history in this country in which the system was built to convince people of color that their feelings don't matter. In other words, the goal was that for them to continue to perform in the absence of thinking how they feel in the context of that performance. And so some of that stigma still persists. There's also a scientific stigma. And that scientific stigma says, it's a history in mental health, which says there's actually nothing wrong with the organ in your head when you have mental illness. So when we think about illnesses like mm. Parkinson's disease or Huntington's disease or Alzheimer's, we can look in the brain and see changes 
And so those became what we call neurological illnesses. Well, when they couldn't find changes 100 years ago, the rest of that became psychiatry. And so that's where a lot of the stigma rose. It was, well, there's actually nothing wrong with you, which is why Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's are named after people who discovered what was wrong with the brain or named the syndrome, while mental illnesses have names like depression or bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, ah, which means yes. splitting of the soul. All negative connotations. Yes, yes. So, oh my so gosh, that, doctor. Yeah. Uh, so so that, that, that the stigma that people experience is the intersection of both the stigma of psychiatry, but also a society which is classically and historically told people that their feelings don't matter. Absolutely. So doctor, first step of action, especially for the communities of color, how do we go get help? Yeah, I, I think you just have to begin by reaching out, right? We have a lot to do um, from uh, the standpoint of psychiatrists in a national organization at reaching out, but that has to occur in part as well. One has to know that there is help out there. I gave a talk for a bunch of churches re recently, about six months ago. And I think that one thing we don't always appreciate in psychiatry is that one of the best medications and best treatments we have available in terms of the data is actually placebo. <laughs> so yes. Anthony Fauci has been on TV talking about the placebo effect. And it turns out that even though we don't know how the brain is doing it, somehow the sugar pill actually makes you better believing that you can get better actually makes you better. So there is a process in your brain where the brain is actually able to learn to get better. Some of the basis of the things we do in psychiatry, whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy, is based on this idea that you can learn your way out of certain illnesses. So I would encourage people to tap into the things that make them feel better, especially when they're in healthy constructs. Each of us can activate what we call that placebo effect in a different way. Now, it doesn't mean that the medication is important and seeing a psychiatrist isn't important. It's the, those things together, the things that make us healthy individuals paired with the other things that are offered in terms of connecting with NAMI or, or other organizations as well, or, Ooh, or church doctor. or meditation. Yes, that's that. Yo, that's so a gem right there. And also, we know a lot of oh, our young snap people. It up. That's not bad. Yes. <laughs> and we know that a lot of our young people are sitting there digesting and absorbing a lot of social media. So, with your same yes. advice, I think it's important to stay away from the news or the bits and of of blogs or or. Um, pieces that make you depressed, things that make you compare yeah. yourself to others, things that make you um, sad about your life or reminders yeah. about things that you're not happy about. Stay away from that and look for the posts or the blogs if you have to be on social media that enlightens you and actually yeah. makes you feel full and light yeah. and happy. Yes. Yes, and that's learning about the things that drive your change energy in positive directions. Again, every single person is different and the set of stimuli that might make one feel incredibly sad promotes resilience in another person. So it's really important to pay attention to ourselves. If you have close loved ones or close friends, they can also give you really great feedback about mm. how you're doing. Sometimes we don't always see it ourselves, right? This is why it's so important for us to stay connected. It's, it's not social isolation. I totally hate that terminology, right? <laughs> that terminology goes, if we think about it making sense, it's like 100 years old, right? We want to think about physical distancing, but not the social distancing. Our brain has a really interesting way of processing loneliness in a way that causes problems for all of your other body systems. So we want people to stay connected. You reach out to your friends, check in on them, see how they're doing. Ask the specific questions. Are you feeling safe? Ask them um, because we have a role to play in each other's emotional and physical Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kaff. Stay, stay safe over there and please uh, do take care of yourself and come up with more ways that we can help get healthier in our brains. All right. Great to see you. <laughs>